Hi, it's Lucy. I have finished my PhD. I mostly loved my PhD. I'm out in the real world on the other side of my PhD. And sometimes I really miss my PhD. And sometimes I think how lucky I was during my PhD. And sometimes I think how you do the coolest things during your PhD and you don't even realize. Looking back on my years in Oxford and I don't know where to begin enlisting the things I'm really, really glad I did. But I can think of a few things that I almost didn't do that I'm really glad I did. And because that's actually a helpful video rather than just me reminiscing indulgently, I thought I would make a video on the top 10 things to try at least once during a PhD from someone who is out on the other side and maybe they're things you might want to try at least once if you decide they float your boat. So getting straight to it and I don't know why but I'm going to start with the least palatable first and that is try getting up at 5.30 a.m. for a week. Hear me out. So I did this for one week, I diaried the process from non sleepiness to oh hey, this now actually feels completely normal and I have all this undistracted time to do whatever I want with. And one year later I'd had time to take up a serious hobby that stopped me from getting too obsessed with the PhD and thinking about it too much and I still do this. I did not have myself down as a morning person at all. I really, really recommend it and yeah, please try it. Don't hate me, please try it. Number two, horrendously push yourself at something you really think you can't do. Coding, thermodynamics, mathematics, these are words that make me go cold with fear even now, but I was doing a science PhD, I was doing a slightly thermodynamics -y PhD, and I knew I would have to face it sooner or later, everything in me was saying, oh hey, you can't do thermodynamics, and I'm reading these textbooks thinking, you can't do thermodynamics, and I'm showing my progress to my supervisor thinking, I can't do thermodynamics. <laughs> Long story short, I did the thermodynamics. Number three, apply for an award you think you won't get. How do you know you're not going to get it? If you're so fantastically clever that you know you're not going to win it, then maybe you're so fantastically clever you might win it. Number four, kind of following on from this, if you have an idea in your research, try it out. I say this kind of follows on because if you think you're not clever enough to get an award, then you're probably thinking if I've come up with an idea that my really clever supervisor and their really clever postdocs haven't already thought of, it's probably not that great an idea. But what if it is? Number five, just once, try biting off more than you can chew. Now, I have made several videos about how when I bit off more than I could chew, it was one of the hardest parts of my PhD, and that video was shortly followed by a video on burnout and recovery, so don't take it that far. At the same time, I think it's a good thing to just once go over your limits, because how else will you ever figure out where that limit is? and know not to go that far in future. I consistently bit off more than I could chew in my PhD, I never got the balance right, I had so many side projects that my PhD started to feel like the side project, and at times I had every hour accounted for, and sometimes I read back on my journal in those times and I think, hmm, how? While I wish I hadn't taken it that far, in a mild form, I really recommend taking on responsibilities and a heavier load, and then rein it in, do what I didn't do, once you've figured out your optimum and you've figured out where your limits are. Try biting off more than you can chew, just once, and then, if you're smart, you don't have to ever do it again. Number six leads on from this, and we're getting gradually more serious now. If you think you're being asked to do too much by your supervisor, by a postdoc, by your department, take a stand and politely, firmly tell them no, because then you become a person who can take a stand. You can stop yourself biting off more than you can chew when it's just you who's responsible for it, but when there's someone else involved whose respect you want to earn or who you're kind of in their power, then you might feel less able to pull back within your limits. And I'm angry now, looking back and thinking, why did I say yes, even though at the time I knew I was being used? At the end of my PhD, I was asked to do something that was not in my best interests because I would have been doing it outside of my new job, outside of thesis writing, in my free time, and I, I felt sick to do so, but I said no. And they were really not happy, and I realised that they weren't happy because it was in their best interests. It sounds so simple, I feel like I'm trying to be a motivational cat poster, but when I told them no, I realised I could tell them no. Try this just once, and then you'll realise you can try it over and over and over again. Number seven on my list is going to follow the serious theme. The previous point was a case of you know something's not right and you know you're able to do something about it, but what happens when you know something's not right but you don't know what to do, or you can't do it? And this is when you should try just asking for help. Ask for help, ask for help, ask for help. This isn't something to try just once. Try this whenever you think you need it. Just try it. Lucy, I'm looking at you. Just try it. Try once, tell me how it goes. Number nine isn't something to try unless you have to. 
Remove yourself from unfixable situations. Try it when you don't have anything left to try. What else is there to say? Ah, this video got dark. I swear I mostly enjoyed my PhD. Okay, how's this for number 10? Super serious, the most serious, serious, serious one. And this is to back up the backups of your backups. Back up your hard drive. Back up your hard drives, plural. Back up your iCloud. Back up your Dropbox. Put really important things on email. Put really, really important things on little USBs that you can then distribute. Do not lose your data. Do not lose your thesis. Do not lose your mind. Share this video to save a life. <laughs> tell me in the comments what your one essential thing to try during your PhD is, or tell me what glaringly obvious thing you can't believe I've missed is, or tell me something so far out that people won't believe that anyone even tries it. I tried a lot of strange things in my PhD, including public speaking, standing up for myself, and drinking coffee. The strangest thing though, the very, very strangest, was that I did the thermodynamics. Just for a few weeks, while it was white hot glowing in my mind, I could have called myself a thermodynamicist. All right, not really, but I still got my PhD just the same. Thanks for watching. My name is Lucy Kizik. I am a scientist in the nuclear industry and a science fiction author, and take care.